Hey guys, I have totally been slacking, but I'm finally getting around to recording a video all about my second experience utilizing the Freestyle Libre Continuous Glucose Monitor in pregnancy. So if you've been following along, you know that I shared uh, that I was using a continuous glucose monitor to check my blood sugar between 17 and 19 weeks. And the reason I, I did that was really just for my own information. I wanted to see my blood sugar trends um, over a 14 day period and just see kind of how my body was responding to foods. And one of the really thing, the really helpful things that came out of that experience is that I just figured out that I run pretty hypoglycemic. Uh, my morning blood sugars would be in the low 60s, sometimes in the high 50s, and typically anything below 70 is considered hypoglycemia. And uh, I would really easily dip into that hypoglycemia range throughout the day. So what I found is that when I increased my carbohydrate intake and even just ate a little bit more, it helped to keep my blood sugar a little bit more elevated. I had more energy and I had fewer symptoms, uh, just including the fatigue and the nausea. And you know that stuff really didn't resolve until about 22 weeks. And so knowing that I could improve those symptoms by simply eating a little bit more and choosing my foods accordingly was super, super helpful. And, you know, I'm a big proponent of listening to your body, uh, responding to hunger cues, just really being in tune with that. But I found that, you know, I really wasn't getting a lot of the hunger cues and, and you know, it wasn't really correlating with what my blood sugar was doing. And so simply by, you know, looking at the data from my monitor and increasing my intake, like that made all the difference in my symptoms. So that was a really, really helpful um, experience. And, and I was so glad to be able to do that. So I had mentioned before that typically in the first half of pregnancy, that is an anabolic state, meaning your body is building up stores, building up reserves to then be able to shunt nutrients to baby because they grow really rapidly during the latter, you know, the, the third trimester, that latter part of pregnancy. And so that's more of a catabolic state. So it would stand to reason that we'll see kind of more, um, insulin sensitivity, you know, you're, you're better able to handle carbohydrates and everything in that first part of pregnancy, whereas later on we'll shift to more of that insulin resistance, which is why we typically will test um, blood glucose levels and do that glucose challenge test around 28 weeks. Uh, so that's kind of what I was expecting to see. So I wanted to go ahead and repeat the testing between 27 and 29 weeks just to see how my levels uh, might change and how my insulin resistance might have increased and all that. And really overall, my numbers were pretty, pretty much the same. I didn't have any numbers down into the 50s. Um, typically upon waking, I was in the low 70s ish, sometimes in low 60s, but rarely. I did find that when I would eat something at night, um, I would typically have like a peanut butter sandwich on like some sprouted grain bread, and that would keep my blood sugar into like the mid 70s for the morning. And, and that was really helpful because I feel like it helped me get um, better quality sleep. But overall, I didn't see a really big change in, uh, in my blood glucose levels. So I wanted to use, you know, this last time, to really see like what foods might be impacting me the most and how to keep my blood sugar in a steady state. Because not only do we want it to, you know, be at a, at a healthy level, um, but we don't wanna see these big, huge spikes. We don't want our blood sugar to constantly be up and down. We kinda of wanna keep it as steady as possible. And that usually means not seeing bigger than a 20 to 30 point swing um, in, in either direction. So what was really interesting is the, the one food that shot my blood sugar up more than anything uh, was pineapple. Pineapple sent my blood sugar through the roof. I think the highest that it's gotten, which was like, it was like 135, which is the highest my blood sugar has gotten. Um, watermelon sent it into like the 120 range, um, but even like a chocolate covered donut didn't send my blood sugar as high as pineapple did, which was really, uh, which was really interesting. So it, it's just, you know, fascinating how different foods impact different people. Uh, but overall, like that, that information was great. I also wanted to be able to see how my blood sugar, 
you know, readings we're comparing on the continuous glucose monitor versus doing finger sticks versus doing, doing a serum level, which is supposed to be the most accurate. So I went ahead and I did a glucose challenge test right at 28 weeks. And uh, rather than use the glucola drink, which is typically given to women in most practices, it's just a 50 gram glucose load. It's a drink. You take it. You're not supposed to be fasted when you take it. Um, and then an hour later, we draw your blood uh, and check that, that blood sugar level to see the response after having that glucose load. And you really want that level to be less than 130, kind of, kind of depending on um, the institution you're working with, but usually about 130 is the cutoff. So my midwife offers an alternative, which is called Fresh Test. If you are really um, not looking forward to drinking glucola, I definitely encourage you to check that out. It still gives you that 50 gram glucose load, but it's natural and organic ingredients. It tastes like lemonade. It would be very pleasant with some tequila. Um, so I went ahead and did that. And then right before she drew my blood, I checked my level on my glucose monitor, which is so handy. Just, I got to scan my phone and I could see the reading immediately. And it said it was 85, I believe. Um, so then my midwife drew my blood and the next morning she called me and said, hey, your blood sugar was at 59 based on that challenge test, which is very low. Um, so that was interesting. So that was helpful in that I know that the serum was much different than what my monitor was telling me. And so going forward, I know that, you know, checking finger sticks and checking the continuous monitor is really helpful for monitoring blood sugar trends, but it's definitely not going to be as accurate as, as getting that serum level. And, and that was a really helpful um, piece of information for sure. Um, I also went ahead and talked to Lily Nichols, which if you're not familiar with her work, I highly recommend checking her out. She has so many amazing resources, but she is a, an amazing author, a registered dietitian, just an amazing nutrition professional. And she's written the book, uh, Real Food for Gestational Diabetes, as well as Real Food for Pregnancy, which are two books that I recommend to clients, friends, family. They're so awesome. Uh, and so we were kind of talking about uh, gestational diabetes and blood sugar and, and, and all of that. And, you know, one of the interesting things that I was thinking about is, you know, we only typically check blood sugar one time in pregnancy and it's at that 28 week mark when we've done the glucose challenge test and you know that's a snapshot in time so it would be so interesting to be able to check those levels throughout pregnancy and kind of see the changes see you know which foods women are reactive to and of course that would require a lot more work and it's hard to to make that a standard recommendation through pregnancy but um, you know, if we get more into this personalized medicine approach, which is something that I get to practice um, with my patients, you know, it would be really interesting to have a little bit more of that data. You know, for me especially, this was such a helpful uh, experiment, if you will, because I tend to require more carbohydrates in general. I seem to be more carb sensitive, um, even outside of pregnancy. And whenever I've tried to do a, a lower carb diet, I have just not felt good. My body doesn't seem to respond very well. And so it stands to reason that that would kind of continue in pregnancy. Um, and that just speaks to how individual we are all are. And, you know, right now, lower carb diets, especially keto, kind of more strict variations of paleo are very, very popular. Um, they're very trendy. They're often recommended by functional medicine providers and coaches and trainers. And so I think it's so important to remember that there is not one approach that is appropriate for everybody. We are all individual and it's really important to, you know, find what works for you and for your body. And it's going to change. It may change over time when you're pregnant or breastfeeding or, you know, training for a certain event or, you know, life is stressful, whatever, you know, we don't have to eat the same way for every season of our life. And I think that's really important to remember. So overall, I thought that, you know, having this data was so interesting. I'm so glad that I did it. I'm a numbers person. I love to experiment on myself. And then I love being able to share my experience. Um, and so I hope to be able to use a continuous glucose monitor with my patients outside of pregnancy, just so they can see how their bodies react to, to certain foods. And I want to show you guys, I showed this in the last video, but 
Um, basically, you implant the monitor right on the back of your arm. It's completely painless. I'm such a chicken when it comes to needles, super easy. And then you use your smartphone or the glucometer that comes in the package um, to actually scan your monitor and you can get um, your numbers. So you just have a nice little log book, you can see. And so one of the things I did is I would eat a meal and then I would actually take my blood sugar measurement every 15 minutes to monitor the trend and see how my body was reacting to that certain food. Um, and that was really helpful. And if you were gonna do that via a finger stick, I think that'd be pretty darn annoying. I don't know a lot of people who would want to uh, do that continuously for 15 minutes. So having the continuous glucose monitor you know, inserted was, was really helpful for, for doing something like that. So I hope that uh, that answers some of your questions. I know a lot of you are really curious about what I was doing and why. And um, if you have any additional questions, please send them my way and I would love to share.